Rant, 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 league podcast. Tell your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your family, tell your haters. Available on Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Radio Public, Pod Chaser, Good Pods, Pocket Cast, Breaker, and Stitcher. At Rec League Podcast on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. At Rec League Pod on Twitter. Episode 83, coming soon. Yo, whether you watching this from Facebook, Twitter, click the link in my Instagram or YouTube itself. What up, world? So, um, I just watched Morbius. It is the uh, third installment in Sony's Spider-Man universe. It stars Jared Leto, Matt Smith, Adria Adjorna. I hope I said her name right. I'm 90% sure I did not. Um, Jared Harris, Tyrese Gibson, Al Madrigal, the family Madrigal. Dude's name is forever ruined for me because of Encanto. Uh, it is directed by Daniel Espinosa, who directed Safe House, Child 44, and Life with uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, not with Eddie Murphy. You got Michael Morbius. He was born with a genetic deficiency. He uses bats, bat DNA, to try to find a cure for himself and his brother. Um, and he becomes a vampire. I'm pretty sure I bitched about it in both Venom reviews. I hate that Sony is taking all these villains and basically making them heroes. They made, I know Venom has always been an anti-hero. Both of his movies, he's the good guy. Morbius becomes the good guy in this. Sorry for the spoilers, what'd you expect? Um, and this is also three straight movies. No Spider-Man. Sony's Spider-Man universe, which is probably five and a half, six and a half hours in runtime now. And no sign of Spider-Man. This movie takes place in New York. There's a vampire on the loose. No Spider-Man. Um, and also, the tra like the trailers, there's like one or two trailers for this movie. I feel like nothing that they showed in the trailers was in this movie. I know there were some things. But there's a scene in the trailers with Jared Harris and Jared Leto in a park bench. That's not in the movie. Um, and I, I won't say what else, but I like, this is, this is pretty much what I expected from this movie. Shockingly, I think both Venom movies are better, even though Let There Be Carnage had like an 80 minute runtime. Um, I just like, like looking at like Safe House, Child 44, Life. I think Daniel Espinosa was over his head as the direct in over his head as a director, piling on two years worth of or almost two years worth of delays because of COVID. Um, I don't think I th I don't think uh, Jared Leto was really that good as his character. He was doing his everyday thing like I'm I have long hair, I'm grungy, I'm I'm a rock guy. But he was bland and he was dull and the script was bland and it was dull and the vampire CGI looked like Sleepwalkers. The the Stephen King movie from 1993. I, I'm sorry it did. I did not think it looked good. Um, there There's quick cuts and like it's PG-13 man so like it's like you can't get that that gory vampire violence. Um, there's obviously set up for a sequel. There's two mid credit scenes, no post credit scene. So don't just get, you should know this by now. Uh, don't just get up and leave when the credits start. Um, I feel like, like every element of this movie, like borrowed something from some other movie, like every, every aspect of this movie feels unoriginal. This shit came out on April 1st. Like what do we expect anything good? You had Iron Man, you had, the Incredible Hulk, you had Iron Man 2. Tony Stark was in The Incredible Hulk. 
scenes from the Incredible Hulk college fight were in Iron Man 2. There, they were they were laying the groundwork to make a shared universe within their first three movies. Even Batman v Superman, take the very first scene takes place during Man of Steel. And then Suicide Squad, Batman is in Suicide Squad. Even the DCEU was connecting before they fucked it up. That, that's the thing too. Warner Brothers has had a good three, four, five shared universes. And they've managed from studio interference to fuck them all. They, honestly, they've all become a dumpster fire. Sony has this one desperate need for a shared universe. It's a dumpster fire. None of these movies are good, but at least the two Venom movies have some kind of enjoyment. Like Ruben Fleischer and Andy Serkis seemed a little more capable than Daniel Espinosa directing this. And we're getting Craven the Hunter next January. Fingers crossed that isn't like it, it's gonna be like they cast Quicksilver from the MCU as Craven. It already sucks. So with all that being said, I will say that in my opinion, Morbius is almost solid. I like I made it seem like it was worse than it is. It's 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 mid. That's that's the best way I can put it. This movie is mid. I can't call it solid. I can't call it dope. But it's not booty pimples. Um, it's it's not trash. It's just a dull, bland, redundant, useless, pointless movie. What did you think about Morbius, man? Positive, negative, somewhere in between. Let me know. Uh, I recently posted my three favorite uh, movies of the first quarter of the year. The My review for The Lost Cities on the channel. Next weekend, I hope to watch and review Sonic the Hedgehog 2, Everything Everywhere All at Once, and Ambulance. Work is determined to fuck those plans. The weekend after, Fantastic Beasts, Secrets of Dumbledore comes out. Excited for that. Start my Harry Potter binge tomorrow. Um, Reckley Podcast episode 83 is about to be a uh, second quarter of the year preview anticipation. Check us out. Listen to what we're excited to watch over April, May, and June, man. Like, subscribe, comment. Find me where you find me, man. Don't know where to find me. Watch these credits. Peace.